Hello happy people, I'm Carpenter with RV Crazy and today I want to show you a little bit of the water damage that's been happening to my house since probably 2007 when it was built. Now I first noticed this problem last month in November when all of a sudden after a rainstorm where the wind was blowing from the north there was some water on my drywall. Now there weren't any stains on my drywall before but after this little rainstorm, there were stains on the drywall from the water soaking through. And that was the first sign that we had a problem. And unfortunately, the previous owner had fixed it totally improperly. But realistically, they just covered up the damage, painted the walls, and made it look presentable. So they could sell the house and pass the problem on to the next buyer, the next owner, which is me. Um, unfortunately, here in the state of Virginia, it is a buyer beware state. So, what do you guys think? Should we go after the sellers? It may be obvious to me that the sellers purposely hid the damage, but I'm sure it's not nearly as easy to prove that to a judge. Sure, we could try to sue, but that's probably not going to work out in our favor. The only people that are making money from suing are the lawyers, but, uh... Yes, that is an option, but I don't think that it's going to be the right option. It just seems like a long, hard road to try to get a little bit of money back. But uh, the one thing that would be nice would be to make the sellers pay for what they hid and the deceitful and fraudulent things that they, it, you know, that to us it feels like they did. Who knows, maybe they thought that they fixed it right, but it's very obvious that they didn't. So I'm going to show you a little bit of the damage here. Uh, in December, just uh, about two weeks ago, we started, or I started seeing some uh, water soaking the drywall again with the north rain, or north wind and rain hitting the side of the house, and then it started dripping, and so I was like, gosh, oh, yeah, I'm going to have to tear this apart, and well, I'll show you what all I've got going on and how I've got it tore apart so far. Um, as you can see, I have lifted the house using some two by sixes, bottle jacks, and a piece of half inch plywood because two by sixes really just weren't enough for the job. I should have gotten some four by fours, but uh, didn't think I was gonna have to lift it that much. Oh well. So, on to the damage. As you can see here, plywood luckily on this whole bottom half, well more than half, but uh, plywood, so luckily it is still sturdy, it is still in one piece, it is not rotting away. However, there is OSB for this top foot or so. And yes, it's pretty much done for, for these four bays. There's a few more over there, but we'll get into that in a second. So the OSB is completely compromised and gone in some places. So some of the sources of leaks right here, you could see the rim joists from the deck because I have my entryway door above this. If rim joists from the deck are cantilevered in about two inches or so. Don't know why, it's not exactly how I would construct it, but I guess some people do it like that. And that thick OSB band board is completely rotting away because of it. There is light coming straight through. It's obviously not flashed properly. And the rot is the result. You can see here, they had uh, put new top plate in. Great job at that, right? It, uh, it's not really supported right, but uh, that's what they did. That's how they thought they were gonna fix this problem. Eye joists are rotting out. They screwed this piece of two by six in to try to support the house as this eye joist rotted out. So that obviously was improper. I took it out already. And uh, this eye joist is not in good shape. <laughs> it is rotten at the top and the bottom and in the middle, in the web there. Floor is rotting in a few spots, rotting through. Again, bottom of the eye joists are rotting. I do have a plan to fix it, but uh, it's a lot more work than I was really expecting, unfortunately. <laughs> when I uh, thought there was a little leak, getting the drywall wet. 
So I'll pull you over to these other side and we'll see how that looks. See right there, I just threw a two by six up on the ceiling on the eye joists to kind of lift them and uh, just to support it a little bit better. So coming down here, you could see again, the cantilevered rim joists. These ones are only cantilevered about an inch and a half or so, but still coming in. And uh, yes, that is that little gray spot right there is air coming through. Um, and top, top, uh, uh, top plates that are rotting away. There's some solid wood in here for this other one, but the top one is obviously completely gone. Over here on this other side of the front door, you can see floor is getting rotting away again. Band board's getting rotten away. And obviously that OSB is rotting away. So that's the fun in the garage. Um, I'll talk about how I'm gonna fix it in a later video, but uh, eh, we'll see. I don't always put out videos. Um, basically, there is one inch right here. And so I'm gonna get a piece of one inch thick plywood. Yes, it's hard to find, but one inch thick plywood, put it in between those sections and then another piece of one inch plywood uh, on the outside. So another inch thick, another inch thick, and basically sandwich everything together with glue in between. Um, it, sure, it might be more proper to use a piece of band board, but I just like plywood. Plywood will hold up a lot better if it does happen to get wet, but the real fix is gonna be on the outside where I actually have to waterproof the house and make it so that it doesn't have water coming in anymore. So just a slow walk around. And uh, on the plus side, while I do have this open, I'm going to be able to throw some water and some electricity on the outside underneath the deck where we're gonna put a little temporary blow up hot tub. So we'll have electricity for that little blow up hot tub and then hot and cold water for washing our dog. That'll be really nice to be able to give her a little shower outside, maybe us a little shower outside, because we're only like three blocks from the beach and a block from uh, a creek. So, well, it's practically a lake. Um, and uh, as you can see, I just got a kayak. I have a few water toys and we definitely like the beach and it'd be nice to have hot and cold water to be able to shower off with outside. So I have started that project just a little bit, but uh, I obviously don't want to get a little bit too ahead of myself. So let's go outside and I'll show you what we're working with out there. Kind of, I don't have a ladder, but yeah. So as you can see here, front door, and here is the little deck. The uh, vinyl, oh, what's that called? Mind blank, I'm getting put on the spot. Um, flashing, vinyl flashing. You can see right there, it obviously isn't installed correctly. I did take off, you can see a little line on the top of that uh, siding. It's like a concrete fiberboard siding. You see a little line, that's because I did take off a strip of caulk. So there's the rim joists that are coming across and up in there. Here, let me zoom in for you. Yes. That is awesome. <laughs> yeah, I'm hoping that I don't have to take this deck completely down, but uh, we shall see just how much I have to do. And not exactly the style of construction that I prefer not having a beam, but at least the posts aren't going all the way up and through. Um, it is actually resting on the post, which is good, but uh, yeah, I don't know exactly how proper that is, but that's what we're working with right now on the outside. So let's go upstairs and I'll just kind of show you what's going on up there. I have yet to take off any deck boards. That really needs to be my next step, but uh, haven't done it yet. They are all nailed down, unfortunately, but 
some damage and destruction will be happening. So all of this siding on the upstairs is a thick, like a luxury vinyl. It's thick, it's not as easy to just, you know, pop out as cheap vinyl. But uh, this this house just, it, it has to be flashed in properly. That's, it has to be that. Um, we'll see uh, how much damage I end up finding in the future, but uh, hopefully not too much. <laughs> um, but yeah, so obviously there's a water trap right here with this uh, J channel. They have tried to caulk it in the past. More of the previous owners improper uh, fixes. So yes, the brick mold is failing. And yes, that actually did get pulled up in the house inspection. Yay, the house inspector at least found that. There was also a water and termite inspection done that said no damage. Um, but yes, so there's been some repairs done here that aren't quite as strong as I would like. Probably honestly gonna just, I don't know, get some PVC brick mold or something, I don't know. I think that might actually be a little bit more structural than I'm thinking now that I'm looking at it, but uh, yeah. So that's how it looks right now on the outside. I need to get you know at least one or two deck boards off and pull up some of that vinyl siding so that I can really see what we're working with. Ugh. Got a little bit of tension on the door right now because of lifting up the house. But uh, I also did pull up some sealant and then take out some screws. There was a slight bow that I could see in the hardwood floor um, before I lifted everything up. So I have everything lifted up right now and you can no longer see a bow in the floor, which is good. But that's what we're working with. I got the tape on the bottom there just because there was a little bit of the door that started uh, wanting to swing down when I took off the weather stripping. But that's what we're working with. And that's my fun little project. <laughs> really wish that I wouldn't have uh, happened upon this two months after buying a house, but it is what it is. And without real home buyer protections, unfortunately, it's on us to fix it. So fun times coming and yeah, I'll talk to you all later. Have a great day. Bye.